All right, folks. Well, first of all, before I start anything, I want to tell there's people that are stepping up, and I'm just so grateful. It's like, oh, talk about taking the pressure off. I mean, oh, my gosh. It's hard enough to do with what I do, um, but doing it while you're taking uh, torpedoes to the bow of the boat is even harder. And the enemy is trying to shut this ministry down. Let me show you what's going on, and then I want to play a short seven-minute clip for you that I think everybody needs to watch for the explanation value of what's going on. Now, I do not, I'm not advocating any particular site like Anonymous. I think Anonymous has great information on a lot of stuff. Um, but until you're born again, none of this stuff really matters because it's all part of the Hegelian dialectic. It's all part of the thesis versus the antithesis. And it's what Satan runs. It's literally his end game. And so, you know, I, I, my hat's off to anyone, anonymous, uh, Julian Assange, uh, anyone that's bringing forth truth, my hat's off to them. God bless you. However, just because you're bringing out information like this doesn't mean you're saved and doesn't mean you've been converted in Christ. Okay. Let's talk about a couple of things first. I've told everybody very directly, I'm not here to just pat you on the back and tell you, oh, you're going to be okay. And, you know, just, for, I don't want people to like me, like I'm trying to, yeah, console you or placate you. I'm not here to placate you. I'm here to tell you the hard, cold reality, the truth of the scriptures, okay, and what's coming. So. I've explained to people, look, if you haven't been turned upside down, how in the world could you possibly be saved? And a lot of people don't understand that. But it's literally the identification of Jesus as the Messiah, knowing what I'm talking about. It is the rock. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will found my church, Matthew 16. So if you're not on the rock, how could you possibly be in Jesus's church? You can't be by definition. So I'm going to do a video for people. And I'll do it tomorrow. But if you want to spend two hours and you want to go watch um, a video that I did with Zen Garcia, um, it, what it was, it, it was a radio program. Now, here's the thing. You know, some people get into all these uh different venues of, oh, flat earth and all that stuff. I don't care about any of that. I don't care about any of it. All I care about is the 100% truth of what the Lord showed me in the scriptures of the identity of Christ. That because at the end of it all, there's only one thing that's going to make a difference in anyone's life. Do you know him? In Matthew 7, Jesus said, in that day, many will say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? Have we not cast out demons? Have we not done many wonderful works in your name? And he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. And I don't want any of y'all to hear that because a lot of people, you know, those are all the people he's talking about that think they know him. They're saying, hey, I prophesied. Hey, I cast out demons. These aren't, you know, coke snorting, hooker chasing, bar hopping partiers. These are religious folks. People that think they know God. So, Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. I'm going to show it to you. Let's just pull it up. And he said, you that work iniquity. And then he says the most profound thing. And I want to show you what he says. And I want to make sure you do not fall into this group. You don't want to hear those words the day he shows up. You do not want to hear, depart from me, I never knew you. I mean, can you imagine thinking you knew Christ and that you're going to be okay and all of a sudden the proverbial crap hits the fan and you're standing there going, well, wait, I thought, you know, I'm a Christian. I thought I was leaving. And, you know, it's like that movie, The Remaining, you know, and you're left behind. Oh, my gosh. 
Bible says, pray that you're accounted worthy to escape all these horrors and stand before the Son of Man. Let me show you something. Go to Matthew 7, 22. This is, this is what, out of anything I can give to you that God has poured through me over the past 14 years, this is the most important thing of all. The, the recognition of Jesus as the Messiah. And I'm going to do a video on it tomorrow, and I'm going to use all the scriptures. I will prove it, prove it, prove it, prove it all day long using the scriptures. Because the truth always points back at itself. Always. So pay attention right here. This is what you don't want to hear. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many. Look at that word. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? Look at it right there. Prophesied. Prophesying is for people that think they knew God. In thy name. And in thy name have we not cast out devils. That is not for people that are running around snorting coke, chasing hookers, bar hopping. These are for the church folks. Have we not cast out devils? And look at this. In thy name. Done many wonderful works. There it is. Let me show you what's going to happen. Many are going to say that. And I will profess unto them. Look at this. I never knew you. So I don't want you to hear that. I don't want any of y'all to hear that. I don't want anyone to get the rug pulled out from them and freak out of your mind in the very moment that you thought it was your salvation. And oh my gosh, it was the worst news ever in that moment that it all happens. He says, I will profess to them, I never knew you. Look at this. Depart from me. That's terrifying. I mean, that's the most terrifying thing in the world right there. To think that you knew Christ and that you were waiting for him and that all of a sudden it's like the worst thing you can hear. So then he qualifies what he just said. Look at this right here. So he says, this is what I'm going to say. Many are going to say, hey, oh, what about us? Let us in. And I'm going to say, you know what? I never knew you. Leave. And then he's, he says, therefore, whoever, whosoever heareth, these sayings of mine, right there, sayings. Go look it up. It's the word logos. Whoever hear these sayings of mine and do it them, it means to do and to understand them. So this is the crux of the whole thing to show whether or not you knew him or not. So whoever heareth these logos of mine and doeth this, hear, hears and understands them. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. If you're not on that rock right there, you're not going anywhere. Because this is the crux of all of Christianity. It is you either built your entire house on the foundation that is the rock. He is the stone of stumbling, isn't he? He is the chief cornerstone, isn't he? He is the rock of offense, isn't he? But yet most people don't even know what it means. And I'm like astounded by it. That has been what I've been preaching since day one. It is literally the very first communication the Lord God gave me in that hotel room. Jonathan. Read the tags and the clothes you're carrying. Go back and listen to my personal testimony. 100% nylon. Does that make any sense? No. It doesn't. 100% nylon. Turn it upside down. And I had already said 100%. And the Lord said turn, turn it upside down. The word nylon. 100% no lion. N-O-L-Y-N. 
So when you turn the word nylon upside down, it's no lion. That was my very first communication from the Lord God. Here it is 14 years later, and it's proved to be the most perfect communication ever, unarguable, supported by every single thing I've done. The entire ministry has been supported by that one statement. And that's what the rock is. You have to turn everything upside down or you'll never see the truth. Let me ask you a question. What kind of trap did everybody get caught in? The Bible says it. Let's go to 2 Timothy 2. What kind of trap is everybody in? 2 Timothy 2. You're in a certain type of trap to do the will of the devil that you were captured by him at will. Here it is. And they that, okay, in meekness instructing those that oppose, look at this, themselves. You oppose yourself because there's a good you and there's a bad you. There's a right side up you and there's an upside down you. And that's the paradigm you live in. And watch this. In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, uh, per adventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging, look at this, of the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the what of the devil. What word is that? What word does that say? That they may recover themselves out of the blank of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. So Satan's taken everyone captive at his will. And what kind of trap are they in? What does it say right there? What kind of trap is that? A snare. It's a snare. Do y'all know what a snare is? Let's just do this. I'm just going to do a short little video. I'm just being led to do it. Google Images, uh, Google Images right here, Google Images. I'm going to do this because I know something you don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to type in something and you're going to go, why is he typing that in? Because I'm going to show you something you don't know. Bent sapling. A bent sapling is what you use to make a snare trap with. That's how you make one. You take a young, tender tree that's kind of green, and you bend it down like this, and you set what co what's called a trigger mechanism. And a trigger mechanism is like this. It's kind of right side up, upside down hook. And when you get, when, it, when the noose gets touched, it goes clink. And it catches on the leg, if you're a human, if you're a biped, if you have two legs, not four, one of your legs gets caught, and then it pulls you, and it hangs you upside down. That's like it's, in, oh, wow, look, there they are. You see that? Look, here's a good example of that trigger mechanism I'm talking about right there. So the kind of trap that you've been caught in by the devil is a snare, and you're probably going, well, why did you type in bent sapling? I want you to show, I want to show you what the trigger mechanism looks like in a snare. Um, you see this? This fits right into here, and it's actually, see, let's just cover this part up with your hands from here below, and take this part, take this part and slide it up. It's right side up, upside down, same shape, one's right side up, one's upside down. See it? Look, look at this part. Go down to here, just go across. Do the same thing uh, here, go down, go across. So if you cut this off right here, and this one, it's ident one's right side up, one's upside down. That's called the trigger mechanism to a snare trap, which is a trap that pulls you, grabs you, and turns you upside down. Well, how do you make one? I typed it in, bent sapling snare. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and give you some scripture right now. I was going to do something else on this video, but I'm just being led. Who knows? Maybe I'll, I'll, this will be my best chance to do it. Okay, well then let's go back to Matthew 16 then. Okay, so everybody, let's do a Bible study together. So get your Bibles out. 
I'm going to leave all this, all these windows over here. We'll get to that. I'll do another video. I'll just leave it there. I've got to go with what's happening right now. Let's just go with it. Matthew 16. Get another Bible. Uh, uh, another Bible window open or open your Bible. And I want you to open up. First Peter 2. I'm going to, I will use the word of God to prove everything I just told you. So here we go. First Peter. And I'm sorry that these weren't already open, but you know, it is what it is. I'm just, I'm going as I'm led right now, people. That's just the best I can do. As long as I'm here doing it, let's just do it. Okay, here we go. Okay, so you're going to go to verse, uh, First Peter 2, get one of those open. You also, as living stones, lively stones, are being built up into a spiritual house. This is you, the New Jerusalem. Being up and built into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God by Jesus Christ, wherefore it is contained in the scripture. Watch. And by the way, this is in Isaiah 28. Wherefore, it is also contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone. Do y'all know who that is? That's Jesus. So the chief cornerstone, which is the foundation of the whole new church, which is a body of believers, because see, it says you, you are being built up as a living stone into this new temple. And the, the foundation of that temple is Christ. He's the chief cornerstone. Okay, so y'all are living stones. So each one of you that has been bought with his blood, you are a living stone. It says it right there, being built up. See, look, you also as living stones are built up into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore it is contained in the scripture, right here. Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, Isaiah 28. Elect and precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. So if you really believe on him, you never have to worry about being turned away. You don't have to be worried about, you know, being confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but to them which are disobedient. Pay very close attention now. The stone, chief cornerstone, which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. There it is. He is a chief cornerstone. So you better know who this guy is right here. He is a stone of stumbling, says it right there. I'm going to highlight this. He is a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense right there. I'm going to color this, I'm going to color that pink because I want you to go back and I want you to remember, let's see, I'm going to, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up Matthew 7 as well. Well, I'm going to give every scripture right now. I'm just being led to every one, Jonathan, every single one. Okay, let's, let's put Matthew 7 back up. Okay, we'll put Matthew 7 back up. Uh, I want you to see everywhere you see that word rock. Okay, watch. Okay, so whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock right there. I'm going to make that pink as well because there's that word rock. And then I'm going to show you exactly what this means. Okay, so let's take Matthew 7, and we'll put it right here. Let's see if this is Matthew 16. That's just perfect. We're going to go down here. Matthew 16, 16. Okay, and then you're going to have 1 Peter 2, and then we'll start it with 2 Timothy, because 2 Timothy is going to show you the trap that you're in. Okay, let's begin. All right, y'all ready? Everybody got your Bibles open. Everybody got your scripture open. If you have this resource, I want you to use eSword. 
So go ahead and open up eSword right now. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to have it available. I'm going to let it go ahead and, you know, go through its little buffering thing here. Um, here we go. This is a great resource. By the way, you can get eSword online and there's no charge. It's absolutely free and it is an incredible resource. Uh, I I would like for you so you understand everything, so you're not tossed around by every wind of doctrine, by the copious amount of people that have no clue what they're talking about. You get this and you will not be tossed around by their, their uh, preconceived conception of what words mean. Because until you look up the meaning of a word, you don't know what it means. I love you in Christ, but it's impossible by definition. So let's just look some words up. So now there, I have a re, this resource up right here. You look, KJV plus. The reason it has the plus on there is because you see every word, every word has a number. Okay, so every word that has a number, every number that you see has a word associated with it. Let's see, uh, here it is, the snare of the devil. Oh, here it is, look, what? Uh, so we're talking about in Titus, I happen to have it up, I mean in Timothy, and they may recover themselves out of the snare. There's the word snare. Let's click on it. There it is. It's uh, Greek 3803 Pod Pod SC. Okay. It's from 4078, which means, you know, I'm not, uh, Pod Numi. And it uh, to fix a peg that is specifically to set up, look at that, that's fascinating. To set up like a tent, to pitch a tent. Think of your bodies. Because your body is the trap. Your body has been your trap. That's been the biggest thing of, of unraveling this whole mystery. Your flesh, you know, your, the Bible says your flesh wars against your spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And here it says right here that the word snare, it says to fix peg that is specifically to set up a tent, like to pitch a tent. And then as we read uh, the origin of the word, it says a trap as a fastened by a noose or a notch. And then it says figuratively speaking, a trick or stratagem temptation snare. Okay, well, let's just drop this down for a second and have a look. Let's look at, that is an identical, uh, it says, a peg, a noose, a, so there it is, the exact, the exact uh, description, a trap as fastened by a noose or notch. So that's a snare trap, and it says, right there it says it, a snare. Right. And figuratively, it's a temptation. OK, so I've shown it to you You're looking right at, it, which is there's one. There's an actual image. Of it. But I typed in bent sapling snare right here for a purpose. Let me show you something. OK. The people that think they're going to leave here when the time comes, they think they know Jesus. They think they prophesied. They think they've cast out demons. They think they've done many wonderful works and he's going to say, I never knew you right there. Depart from me. That's going to really suck for to hear those words. Depart from me. And you're going to be going, oh, my gosh, what happened? And then he says, here's the reason why he's telling everybody that thinks they're going to go to depart. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock. Let's go ahead and have a look at that. So let me just go ahead and move this over a little bit. We're going to go to Matthew. And we're going to go to 7. Go down to our verse. Okay. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine. I told you it's the word logos. This is very important. You must look at this word. It's G3056. The, the word logos. Is the exact same word as the Gospel of John, 
chapter one. In the beginning, there was the Logos. I'm going to show you. And the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. Look, here's John chapter one. In the beginning was the Word. Look at that. It's the same word. So the word Logos is God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I love you in Christ, but I don't care what anyone says. That is the identification of the Word. The Word was God. There's no argument. In it. Let's look at what that word is. Let's click on it. What does it say right there? What's that say? It says G3056 Logos. Something said. God, you know, the word of God is the very sound of God. Do you understand? The very sound of God into this dimension you're in. God making a sound into this dimension through humans. God is the word. That's his identity. one of his identities right there okay let's go back to our matthew we're going to go to matthew matthew 7 let's go down okay many will say to me in that door day lord lord have we not prophesied have we not done many wonderful works there it is prophesied in thy name have we not cast out devils demons Right there, demonic beings. In thy name, have we not done many wonderful works? He says, and I will profess, depart from me, I never you knew you that were, depart from me, you that work iniquity. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine, somebody tell me what it says. What is that word sayings? Logos. Whoever heareth these sayings, Logos. You cannot know God without understanding the Word of God. You can say you do, but if you think you understand the Word of God and you're in error, like all these people, then you're in error. That's all there is to it. You thought you knew the Word of God, but you were wrong. You thought you knew God and you were wrong. So he'll say, whoever heareth these sayings, these logos of mine, and doeth them, I'll click on it, uh, poejo. It means to make or to do, and it also means to understand, execute, exercise, fulfill, and to understand them. Whoever heareth these logos of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house on a rock. So, you better be on this rock and let's look and see what the rock is. So the people that don't get turned away from the Lord God, when that day comes, and that day, what day? The day that shows up. Um, yeah, where everyone has to give an account. And if he shows up to take his bride, you know what? You better hope that you know him because if you don't know him, you're going to be one of these guys, no matter what. So here it goes. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon the rock. Let's look at what the word rock is. It's the word, it's the number G4073 right there. And the word is Petra right there. See it? Petra. What does Petra mean? It means mass of rock. You're looking right at what it means. It means Petra. The definition of rock says it right there. Petra right there. And it, what does Petra mean? It means mass of rock that's what it means okay we've established that let's keep going i'm going to make this small now we're going to go to the identification of yeshua as the christ the the savior okay so this is very interesting because he told his disciples he asked them this is matthew 16 13 when he got the coast of caesarea he said whom do people or men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So he's asking his disciples, hey guys, who does everybody say that I am? And he did it for a reason, because you will never, ever, 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 ever find out the identity of the Christ 
by taking some man's word for it. I don't want you to believe me. I want you to go find out yourself. I'm giving you the information. You got to go find out yourself. Watch. Verse 14, and they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist. Eh, wrong. Some say Elias. Eh, wrong. And others say Jeremiah. Eh, wrong. Or one of the prophets. Eh, all wrong. So, no one can tell you who he is. And here comes the most important question to every human being that's ever been on this planet from the time of Christ. This is the single most important you could question you could ever be asked and that should be asked of every single human being that's ever lived since Christ. And he said unto them, But whom do you say that I am? This is everything. This is the whole deal. This is the whole thing of Christianity right here. Who is he? Who is Jesus? And when you recognize who he is, he's going to turn you upside down. I'm going to prove it. And Simon Peter, now y'all remember, this is Peter. Peter, this is Peter. His real name is Simon, son of Jonas. And Simon Peter answered and said, look, here it is. Thou art the Christ, oh my gosh, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and he said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Barjona means son of Jonah. Well, here it comes. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. Because flesh and blood never reveals to you who the Messiah is. You have to go to God. You can't ask someone to, oh, well, I know him because Johnny knows him wrong you got to know him yourself i can show you but you have to go yourself flesh and blood do not reveal it to you but my father which is in heaven and here it comes and i say unto thee that thou art peter he changed his name his name was simon son of jonas he said you know what now i say unto thee that you are Peter. Let's look and see what Peter means. Matthew 16, down to verse 16. And I sent to you that thou art Peter. Let's see what it is. It's not Petra, is it? It's Petros. I say unto you that you are Peter. It says Petros, it's G4074, there it is, Petros. And look what it means, a piece of rock. A small piece of rock, not a big piece of rock. What do you do with rocks when you build on a foundation of rock? Well, you take one rock and you start plastering it onto the foundation. And you build your walls with your rocks one on top of another until you build your building on top of your foundation. So Peter, or Simon, son of Jonas, he just had his name changed. I'm going to call you Petros, says it right there, right there. And thou art Peter, Petros. I'm going to use the name Petros because that's really what it means. Petros, it means I'm going to call you piece of rock. And upon this rock, I, look at this, I will build my church right there. So I love you in Christ, but no matter what you say, or no matter what I say, no matter what anybody on the planet says, according to the word of God, and the word of God is God, according to the word of God, and the word of God is God, if you're going to be in Jesus's church, you have to be on this rock. And upon, upon this rock, upon this rock, upon this rock, I will build my church. And look at this. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But watch. Upon this rock. Well, he just named Peter Little Rock. What is this rock? Let's click on it. Oh my gosh, it's Petra. Same as back in Matthew 7. The one that 
the people that didn't get turned away were on. The ones that were wise and built their house upon the rock, the Petra. There it is. See? Petra. Look what it means. Mass of rock. It's the foundation. So, if you're going to be on Jesus's, in Jesus' church, and by the way, I want to show you what the word church means. It means those that are called out. Look. It, look, look, a calling out. That's what it means. A calling out. That's what ecclesia. Those that have been called out of here, out of this dimension that you're trapped in, which is called the flesh. Now watch. Okay, so Jesus said, and upon this rock, I will build my church. There's the word rock. It's Petra. And I will give unto thee, Peter, the keys. The word is Christ. It's key. Look at this. A key, as in shutting a lock. Okay. What do you do with a key? You put a key in a lock, and you turn it upside down, and the door opens. That's how you open a lock. You put the key in the lock, and you turn it upside down, and the door opens. Well, isn't that fascinating? Jesus was crucified right side up. And Peter was crucified upside down, just like a key going into a lock. Because you're about ready to get the key to the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to give it to you. Because the Lord God gave it to me the night I got saved. He told me to turn the word nylon upside down, and it was no lion. You ready for the key to the kingdom of heaven? Let's go ahead and reduce this. I'm going to go up just a little bit. Okay, here we go. 1 Peter 2. All y'all are being built up into a spiritual temple for God to occupy. Here it is. To you that believe he is precious, but to them which are do, disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, a stone of stumbling. Look at this. So, Jesus Christ is, look at this, here it is, the stone right there, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. He's the chief cornerstone. He is a stone of stumbling, and look, he is a rock of offense. Now watch. To those which stumble at the word. Oh my gosh. They stumble at the word. Let's highlight that. You mean like the people that think they know the word like poor Neftali, like poor Shannon Johnson, like poor people that say false prophet, ridiculous nonsense. They think they know the word. Jesus is a stone of stumbling to those that think they know the word. It says it right there. He is a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word. By the way, remember what the word is? The word is the logos. So they stumble at the identity of Christ. Well, he is the word. So that if you don't know the word, then you don't know Christ, do you? It's impossible by definition. Well, let's take a look at this. He's a stone of stumbling. There's that word rock of offense. Prepare your heart to receive the truth right now. Before I turn this page, before I do anything, stop and pray. In the name of Yeshua, Father, I ask you in your name, the name of your Son, to reveal to me the identity of the Christ, the same one that you identified, that allowed Peter to identify me. What I mean is the Christ. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about Jesus. So just ask God to identify Yeshua to you. Ask him. Say, identify the Christ to me. Ask, ask him to do that. And mean it. Let me help you now. Ready? First Peter 2. 
Who got crucified upside down? Peter did, didn't he? And then I'm going to show you something so profound, you'll never forget it. 1 Peter 2, which is what we're looking at. To you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but to them which are disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same as made the head of the corner. He is a stone of stumbling. Look right here, a stone of stumbling right there. Look at what this word is, stumbling, apostasy. He is a stone of stumbling, of apostasy, those that think they know the word, watch. And he is a rock. There it is. There's that. Oh, it's the same word, Petra. And this is his identity, so you better pay close attention. He is a stone of stumbling. He's the chief cornerstone, and he is a rock of offense. A rock, Petra, right there. And look at the word offense. What does it say? A trap stick bent snapling that is a snare. Oh my gosh. So if you don't turn everything upside down and backwards, you don't know Christ. Because you were caught in the snare of the devil, so you've lived your whole life upside down. You've been upside down your entire life. And when you get saved, he turns you the other way and you can see the truth. Let me give you an example so you understand exactly how profound this is. Remember I told you I got people drawing images of me, putting images of dead sheep on me? Let's turn an image of the Virgin upside down. That's how you recognize you're in a prison. Oh, wow, look. Look, you turn the Virgin right here upside down, and here's a dead sheep. There's the eye, the eye, the no, nostril, nostril. Lines and lips, thumbs again. You see, I just gave you the key to the kingdom of heaven. God gave it to you through me. I didn't give it to you. You see the dead sheep? That's you. You've been crucified upside down. You've lived your whole life upside down. You were looking at this, walking around, thinking you're looking at an image of the virgin when you're really looking at a dead sheep. That's how you know you're saved. When you turn everything upside down. Now, the very guy that God gave the key to the kingdom of heaven to, his name was Peter. He named him Peter. He said, upon this rock, I will found my church, Petra, and I will give to you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to open up a Google search. I would like for you to do this as well. This is the most profound thing on the planet. The Acts of Peter. Right here, look. Acts of Peter, early Christian writings. Now, do y'all know that the Bible used to be a lot more than 66 books? Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that at the Edict of Constantine, the Bible was dramatically changed to paganize Christianity and make it come in line with Rome and Constantine? Okay, well, without getting into a long history lesson, just go look it up yourself. You can believe me. There used to be an 88-book canon. A lot of those books were taken out and the Apocrypha, and a lot of stuff has been left out. I don't need the Apocrypha to prove what I said is true. I just proved it using the Bible. But I'm going to go to the Apocrypha because I'm going to show you what Peter said. So this is the Acts of Peter, the one that was actually crucified upside down. And this is the historical document that we use to show that Peter was crucified upside down. Why do you think St. Peter's Basilica, look on it from Google Earth, is a giant black keyhole with an upside-down cross, which is the Vatican? Okay, so here Peter is. He's about to, he's about to get hung on the cross upside down. And so here it is. And having approached the cross, attending by the cross, he began to say, O name of the cross, thou hidden mystery, Oh, grace ineffable that is pronounced in the name of the cross. Okay, I'm not going to go through all that. I'm going to go through this part right here. 
I beseech you, the executioners, crucify me thus with my head downward, and not otherwise. And the reason wherefore, I will tell unto them that hear. So Peter's telling the Peter's telling the guys, hey, guys, the executioners, would you please crucify me head down? And I'll tell you the reason once you do it. And when they had hanged him up in the manner he desired, he began again to say, You men unto whom it belongeth to hear, listen to what I shall declare to you at this special time as I hang here. So Peter's saying, hey, for those of you that are meant to hear it, you're going to hear it. Learn the nature or the mystery of all nature. So he's saying, you want to know the mystery of all nature and the beginning of all things. Think of Genesis. What it was for the first man, which is Cain, by the way, whose race I bear in mine appearance or the race I who bear the likeness. Look at this word fell. That means from heaven was born into the flesh head downwards, and showed forth the manner of birth as was not certain to you before. How'd you get here? Weren't you birthed head downwards? Okay, don't get into a, don't get into a thing whether or not you were into a, uh, you know, into a breech birth. So we all came into our prison suits head downwards. It's called the flesh. Let's get right to the meat. He said, he then, being pulled down, cast his first state down upon the earth, established his whole disposition of all things, being hanged up in the image of creation, wherein he made the things of the right hand to the things of the left hand, and the things of the left hand into the right hand, and he changed about all marks of their nature, so that he thought those things that were not fair to be fair. And those things that were in truth evil to be good. Does that remind you of today's politics? Yes, it does. Concerning, here it is, which the Lord saith in a mystery. You better pay attention, people. I just showed you this exact same thing in the Bible. I just showed you in the Bible, by definition, the identity of Christ is you turn everything upside down. Here is Peter. He's hanging upside down. He's saying, hey, you want to learn the mystery of all things? Which, look, concerning which the Lord saith in a mystery, unless you make the things of the right hand as those of the left, and those of the left as those of the right, and those that are above as those below, and those behind as those before, look at what it says, you shall not have knowledge of the kingdom. It's his identity. Let me show you, maybe this uh, maybe this will work. Word nylon. And I'll go to, there it is. Okay, so if you turn nylon upside down, N-O-L-Y-N. -N. No lion. So if you turn nylon in capital letters upside down and backwards, it's no lion. That's, there you go. Take this word, turn it upside down and backwards. N-O-L-Y-N. -N. Told you. The night I got saved, the very first thing that the Lord said was, read the tag and the closure came. It said 100% nylon. And I said, it doesn't make any sense. And he said, turn it upside down. Unless you make the things of the right, hand as those of the left and those of the left of those of the right and those that are above as those below and those that are behind as those before read it you shall not have knowledge of the kingdom and that's what i'm telling you that's why peter was crucified upside down now watch if you stick your arms out to the side and you go this is my right hand this is my left hand this is my top this is my bottom this is before this is behind and you turn it all upside down Right becomes left, left becomes right, that which is above becomes that which is below, and you are freed from your prison. Praise God. So now I've given it to you. I was going to do this video tomorrow, but now it's done. Now I will show you what's going on on the next video. The powers that be are after your, yours truly, Johnny. They are trying to utterly destroy the ministry. Let me show you very quickly what um, 
we have going on here. See if it's gonna see if it's gonna um, play out. www dot this is it four three two one. That's our new site. This is www dot this is it four three two one. This is our brand new site that just got launched a day ago, and uh, the other site was cleaned up. Let me show you what happened. Um, let's see. There you go. Already destroyed. Um, I contacted GoDaddy and we went in and we looked at what, what the heck is going on. Not only, even though we cleaned up all my files, all the code, everything, uh, they're, they've embedded malware in the link connection. So they're trying to cut the head off this ministry. You know why? Because we know the truth. That's why. All this stuff that's going on in politics doesn't matter. Remember I showed you Rip and Dip? If you look at this shirt, you know, they have the same shirt with the the cat inside the pocket with the pocket right side up. And it looks like the cat is just smiling at you. Where if you pull down the sleeve of the pocket, the cat's really shooting the bird at you. I'm going to try and see if I can pull one up real quick. Uh, there we go. So, yeah, right there. So if you see it, see, it looks like the cat's just sitting in the pocket. But when you pull the pocket down, the cat's shooting you the double bird. Well, now they have, they have their new shirt. The cat's out of the bag, shooting you the double bird. And this is Satan mocking everybody through a clothing line. The cat's out of the bag. You've been turned upside down. Double bird to everybody. There it is right here. Unless you make the things of the right hand at those of the left... Think of Peter being crucified upside down right now. He's actually upside down talking. And those of the left, it's those of the right, those above is those below. And those are behind is those before. Look at what he says. You shall not have knowledge of the kingdom. I told you. The identity of Christ is a trap stick, a bent sapling snare. That is the rock. And if you're not on that rock and you haven't been turned upside down, then you simply don't know Christ. That's all there is to it. You don't want to hear those words. I never knew you. Okay, go find it yourself, folks. you got to go ask yourself. I can show you the door. I can't shove you through it. Praise God.